Hello everybody and welcome to part 2 of my MacBook Air repair. As you can see, everything is working um, since we replaced the keyboard. Um, everything has been worth working perfectly. Um, if you remember, I, I used uh, the screws instead of the rivets to, to screw the keyboard to the casing. And it's it's really nice and solid. Um, it, it's not, I, I did some research afterwards and it's not, um, the keyboard isn't uh, an original uh, genuine Apple part, but um, it feels just the same. It's just got a little bit more travel, which personally I find it I find as a bonus. But anyway, um, today's video we're going to be replacing the battery in this thing because if I zoom in up here, you can see it says ninety four percent and it says uh, condition replaced now. Um, it's a little bit screwed, and if I unplug this, then the whole thing just shuts down. So the battery is well and truly screwed. Um, it hasn't started to swell, which is uh, always a b bonus. Um, but yeah, I need to start using this laptop as a laptop again. So having a new battery is um, really going to be helpful. So before again, before we open the the, the MacBook up, I'm going to show you around the parts and all the tools that I'm going to be using uh, today. So then, here is the battery. Um, this is a genuine Apple part because the number of third-party batteries that I have bought and they've just been absolutely terrible. Um, they either don't work at all or they only last an hour or they just break down six months down the road and they can do more damage than uh, you really expect. So I decided to get a genuine Apple part here and hopefully it should give me a good few hours of um, battery life. we got lots of paperwork in here. I guess batteries and stuff have to go through a lot of tests. It came from Hong Kong. Um, I know you, you, you're thinking as soon as it comes from Hong Kong, oh my god, it must be a, a, a fake, but I don't think that they would go to... Yeah, it, it, it's... I don't know, actually. That's, that's a little bit worrying. Um, if I zoom in... See there, designed by someone in, in California. They've they've covered it in ink. I'll I'll scrape those off and see what it says underneath. But anyway, um, tools. Pentalobe screwdriver, obviously, as we used last time. Um, this battery replacement is a lot simpler than the keyboard replacement. Really nice screwdriver, actually, and um, it needs to be really because these things are so easy to to um, strip. We've got a Torx T5, I believe, um, nice little screwdriver. Again, that's just to get the um, five screws on the battery out. And I've just got a spudger here just in case. Um, although there is a little tab on the battery itself by there, I just got it there um, just in case the connector needs a little bit of persuasion. But anyway, yeah, that's um, quite interesting, that little ink. I'm going to scrape that off, see what it says, and then um, I'm going to get back to you. Okay, then, so I have... Um actually scrape the crap off um, that battery and it says Apple underneath so and I mean I, I've had many third-party batteries in the past and this one it feels identical to the one that's in the MacBook Air it, it seems like a, a legit part it just confuses me why they why they scraped the, the Apple names off unless they nicked it off the back of a lorry or something and just flogged it I don't know um, it, it totally beats me if if anybody's bought like MacBook Air, MacBook Pro batteries, and they've they've had that sort of the Apple in, engraving just scraped off it, can someone tell me why they do that? Because it's just I just don't understand it. It says in the listing on eBay it's a genuine part and everything. It's not like they're trying to hide that it, it it's a third party, but I just don't know. But anyway, same same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten uh, pentalobe screws. And I do try my best uh, not to strip these because they are so, so delicate. Every, every screw in this, inside the case, is um, Torx, be it T5, T6, or T8. And, um, and until you get to the battery, uh, not the battery, sorry, the, the keyboard, and then it's uh, Philips. And only these ones on the outside of Pentalope. I, I really don't understand the whole thing of, of keeping a user out of the system. Because one, I this, this screwdriver cost me two quid. It's not like it's some sort of 
super secret, massively. It it just doesn't. I I just don't get it because over time, these things pick up a, a ridiculous amount of dust, and because people don't have these screwdrivers unless they go out their way to actually buy one, the the amount of dust. I I get these things in, and they are just absolutely plastered in dust, and they they run so hot and everything, and then I the own honestly the only thing I can think of is. Apple want them to break down because <laughs> after years and years of, of dust, it, it obviously probably won't happen w within the warranty period. Um, then they run hot, then they overheat, and something breaks down, and then they send it into Apple, and then Apple get another few hundred quid out of a machine that, um, or or the user just moves on to a new product. So that is the only only thing, oops, only way I, I can sort of think they do it. But anyway, there we go. Top panel lifts off. Not la not that long ago since we uh, was in this system last. And yeah, they have all of the same. These batteries are identical. Look at that. The font. That's one thing because on the keyboard it's not a genuine part, so the font is different on the on the on the actual keycaps. But there, it's identical. It is completely identical. They're either really, really good copycats, or um, it, it is a legit part. I, I don't as as long as it as long as it works and as long as it gives me decent battery life, and I don't really care. But um, there we go. That's the connector. We didn't need the budget. Just uh, slide that out, and let's get our Torx screwdriver. Really simple job. People say these these aren't. Um, user replaceable anybody with us with a, a couple of screwdrivers and about a quarter of an hour of their time can do this it's really not hard really not hard at all in terms of performance um, since I, I replaced the keyboards and since obviously everything was covered in beer <laughs> it's, everything's been fine I mean performance wise it's, it's been flat out it's a really really nicely spec system because um, you often get sort of like voltage regulators, they get um, shorted, which means the computer runs slow or whatever. But luckily, I, I've I've seemed to avoid that. So yeah, it's running pretty much perfectly. But there we go. That's the old battery. Yeah, even the little serial number is in gold on the back. So I'm I'm gonna just say that yeah, that is a legit part. And they for whatever reason. I've just decided to rub the Apple logo off. I, I, I just don't understand. Oh yeah, here. This is something I did off camera. Um, the Apple one, you know I was complaining in the last video. If you haven't seen the last video, go check it out. I was complaining about um, the 90 degree angle connector or 180 degree angle connector. The reason why they do that is because obviously everything sits flush up against each other. The battery sits flush against the connector and the connector sits flush up against the trackpad. And what I was finding, because this this new keyboard wasn't as uh, it didn't have as much of a flat connector. It wasn't completely 180 degrees. It would bow a little bit. I was finding the 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 glass from the trackpad was actually sort of sticking out. So there was a bit of travel before it was actually clicking. So I had to rip it back open again and um, just sort of tape it down to make it make it sit as flat as possible. It's been fine since, but. Um, now I understand why Apple have that connector. But um, yeah, in goes the new battery. Nice and not covered in beer. May as well just plug it in. And then, um, yeah, we're pretty much done now. So I'm going to screw everything back together. And um, I'll get back to you when everything is plugged in. Okay then, so everything is back together. Um, I haven't plugged the MagSafe in, I'm just going to see if it has a charge. But here we go. Oh yes, get in there. The brightness is really, really low, but um, we have lift off. That is awesome. I am so happy this is working, guys. I was kicking myself for days. So we can turn the brightness up. Here we go. Awesome stuff. I 
35% charge. Um, if we go into about this Mac and see what's going on. Power, cycle count, zero. Awesome. Full charge capacity, 6700 milliamp. Now I'm not sure, I'm going to look that up afterwards, but I don't think that's an Apple original battery. And if it's not, then um, I think I've got a little bit of a case. With it. But um, yeah, I, I've just got a working laptop, now I can pick it up and I can take it around places. That's That's all I want, guys. That's all I want. So yeah, this is the end of part two, and this is the end of the little sort of mini MacBook Air liquid damage repair. Um, series. I hope you enjoyed it. Brand new keyboard, brand new battery, um, and I've got pretty much now a brand new laptop. So I hope you enjoyed the video guys, and as always I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.